um, I will be talking about visualization in multi-objective optimization and more specifically how we can visualize needs of Pareto fronts. Uh, so first I will be just introducing a little bit the multi-objective optimization problem and needs and then um, I will present this um, let's say a special problem or family of problems that contain, that has, have needs, and then how we use seven different visualization methods to see if they are able to visualize those needs. Okay? So uh, in multi-objective optimization, we need to um, optimize more than a single function. We will be minimizing all functions um, in the rest of the presentation. And so the thing is that when you want to do this, you will, um, you have first of all two spaces that you're concerned with. One is the n-dimensional decision space and then you have the m-dimensional objective space. And the thing is that uh, most probably you won't get a single optimal solution that would be, that will be better with regard to all of the objectives, but you get a set of optimal solutions and we call this set the Pareto set when we are talking about the decision space and uh, it's called Pareto front in the objective space. So what are needs? Um, here for example is an example of a Pareto front and any dominated points, any those that are not optimal would reside here and the optimal ones are on this um, surface here. And what are needs? Needs are let's say regions that stick out uh, I don't think there is a formal definition of what a knee is, but let's say um, we can say that uh, re these are regions where a small improvement in one objective would um, make uh, or lead to a, a deterioration, large deterioration in uh, at least one other objective, which means that you are, you really want to find this solution at the knees because just they, they uh, provide a better trade-off, let's say, than solutions outside of needs. And the thing is that this is actually what decision makers who, are, uh, who need to select best solutions or select some solutions to use them uh, in practice, this is what they do. They try to find needs and they will, of course, prefer, let's say, a solution at needs than other solutions. So because this is... Um, something very useful, we also want to be able to visualize such needs. And here we show two examples. One is of a 2D front and one of the 3D front of the same family that um, I will be talking about uh, later. And so the question is, okay, 2D and 3D, everything is fine, but how to visualize needs or visualization in general is very complex when you get to four or more dimensions. And um, we will be using this problem uh, for four dimensions and we will be showing these uh, seven visualization methods. Now for about the problem, so it's a family of problems actually and it's based on the very known DTLZ optimization problems which are scalable to any number of objectives. And what they did here was add an additional parameter modify the problem, of course, add by adding also an additional parameter that controls the number of needs. And so what happens is that now you can have, uh, for a problem with M objectives, you can um, generate a problem with uh, K to the power of M minus one needs. And this is, for example, the formal definition of this uh, problem uh, in the case of four objectives. And what we, cho what we did, let's say for starters, is to, to select K equals one and get a front with a single knee. So now we have this um, analytical problem and we want to um, visualize sets, uh, I mean Pareto front approximations. So we uh, sample this front um, using um, some points and the idea is that because you are in four dimensions, you want to have many points um, to to let's say represent the front well. But then the problem is that uh, visualization methods, very many of them have troubles visualizing thousands and so thousands of points. So what we did, we, we first did this sampling of 3,000 points on the <laughs> front and then um, took this as the large set but then just took the first uh, 300 solutions for some of the methods that, are, uh, that have trouble <laughs> visualizing very large sets. 
And out of these uh, 3,000 points, we found the knee and then, um, let's say, um, noted especially eight, solution, eight solutions that are closest to the knee um, so, that, um, so that we can look at them. We can see if those uh, solutions stand out in the visualization somehow. And so in the large set, we have eight such points. And when we take the smaller set, we have just five. Um, such points, but it should be enough. Okay, so now let's see how the methods are doing. First, we have the sc scatter plot matrix, which is a very simple visualization method. We have the four dimensional objective space and we just project it to every possible uh, projection on two dimensional space. So any um, gray point is one of the 300 points uh, we had in the Perito front approximation and the red ones are those that are uh, at the knee, let's say. And what you can see here is that you can kind of infer, okay, these red points have very low values in all of the four objectives and you can see that from here, but you cannot say anything about the shape. You cannot see the knee. You, you couldn't, if those points were gray, you couldn't differentiate uh, them in any way from the rest. So this is not doing very well. Next is the bubble chart. Um, this, this kind of plot has um, three objectives on the three axes, and then the fourth objective is represented by bubble size. Um, and what we have here, now, okay, here there's a little, a little bit of problem with, um, uh, let's say, um, visualization methods, um, capabilities somehow. The problem I'm, uh, the program I'm using to plot this will plot every gray bubble first and then the red ones on top of them. But this doesn't mean that these reside, you know, um, let's say <laughs> ne nearer to you. Uh, it's just this is the way how they visualize. Based on their size and their, on their position, you can again see that they have low values in all the four objectives, but they are just in between those other bubbles. And if I were to uh, turn this around, look uh, at this from the other way, you could still get some uh, gray bubbles in front of it. So you, again, you cannot really see the knee from this perspective. Then we have parallel coordinates, which is also a very known and um, um, often used method. And you, so the idea is you, any ob every objective is a parallel coordinate um, in this plot. And then one solution is a polyline just intersecting those um, coordinates uh, at, the, at the value of the solution in that objective. And so again, what you get here is these five, five polylines or five um, solutions, and you can see their values very well, but again, th if they were gray, you couldn't see any, um, anything from it. And also, one note about uh, this method and bubble charts and somehow also the scatterplot matrix. So, um, really 300 solutions is, is a lot for them to visualize. So putting thousands of solutions up there, you just wouldn't see anything at all. So it's uh, very sensitive to the number of solutions shown. Next is the radial, radial, radial coordinate visualization, uh, which is a nice method, let's say, um, that uh, it's inspired by physics, so um, you, you put uh, objectives around the circum circumference of the circle and, um, and then um, a any o every objective kind of uh, pulls uh, the point towards itself, um, which is with a st uh, string that it's, not string, string. no, 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 the the strings, are there, strings but yes, yeah, no, with, with a string that it's uh, as strong as the value in that objective. So, for example, for this point, um, this point has a very high value in objective F2, a little lower value in objective F3, and let's say even lower values in those other objectives. So, um, what you get then again, um, and for example, here maybe because the plot is a bit larger, we are able to, to show uh, all the 3,000 solutions, but again, the, the knee ones don't stand out. And what it's a bit fair, I mean, I have to say this, it's um, a bit unfair for this um, to, to ask from these problems to show the knees. Because what happens is those, those no problems, sorry, methods. So th those methods are, were not conceived to show a knee. 
they were, they are, let's say, general visualization methods used anywhere in uh, machine learning, for example, and so on, in data mining. And of course, they don't show the need because this is not what they're after. And so we do have some uh, more specific visualization methods used in multi-objective optimizations, optimization that do, can uh, show the need. And one of them is called level diagrams. And it's basically a set of M diagrams for M objective problems. So for a four objective problem, you have four diagrams. And each solution here is represented, it's plotted against its value in this one objective um, and the distance to the ideal point. The ideal point is the, let's say, basically uh, the um, origin, origin of the coordinate system in what we are looking for. So it's the point that would really dominate everything else. Um, and here you do see this uh, knees. So you're able to, to see that there is a spike there and that is a knee. So this is, um, let's say, a successful method uh, for, this, uh, for this purpose. Then we have hyperradial visualization that is very similar uh, to the level diagrams, but um, the distance to the ideal point, also called the hyperradius, is computed uh, separately for um, in the space of F1, F2, and that is used here um, as this value, and then separately for uh, for the space F3, F4, and this is uh, plotted on the y-axis. And so here as well, you can see kind of sticking out some points, and these are these are this. Um, knee points that we are, were in, we are interested in. And then finally, uh, this is a method called prosections, which is uh, different from the others, mainly in the fact that it doesn't visualize all the points at the same time, but it visualizes just a section uh, of the points at a time. So the, the idea here is, for example, if you were to have um, an approximation set uh, in 2D, what you do is you take a line at angle phi um, here and then take a section uh, around that line and any point that kind of falls into this section is projected onto this line while all the others are ignored. So this is a way to just kind of slice through the objective space and just show that slice. And the thing is you cannot just do it using just one actual slice because you would miss points. This is why you take a section so the slice has some points in it. Um, and the, what you can, so what happens here is we take, we do this, uh, let's say, pro pro section. This is a projection of a section. We do it for uh, objectives F1 and F2, and we plot the outcome here. And we keep the F3 and F4 objectives the same. And we get here a 3D plot, which I cannot rotate it here now, but would really show sticking out uh, the, same, the same way as the 3D plot I was showing you before of the 3D problem uh, sh sh has shown really a nice um, knee. Also here you can really see the knee sticking out, so you're able to visualize it. The problem with this method is that, um, of course, you're just visualizing a section of the space, so this is a section that contains the knee. If you move away from the knee, you also get to visualize sections that c don't contain the knee. So what you need to do is kind of go through the objective space, look at multiple plots, and then when you see the one you're interested in, then this is the one you take. Okay, so um, to summarize, uh, we have shown this um, knees with four different, no, with seven methods, but four of them were unable to show the knee and the latter three were able to, to do this. Um, but we were also commenting a little bit in the paper, not so much here before, uh, what happens if you have multiple knees, not just a single one? The thing is that, for example, for this, for level diagrams and for hyper radial visualization, um, th these methods really, um, let's say, are dependent ver depend very much on this uh, distance to the ideal point. But you can have knees that are also not very close to the ideal point. You can have them on the other parts of the objective space. So what we think might happen is that those knees could get hidden somewhere uh, when, when you have a problem with multiple knees. So that it could happen that those two 
um, those two uh, visualization methods wouldn't be able to show it so nicely as they are able now because this is really a need that sticks out and it's really close to the ideal point. And um, what, what we expect is that the perception method uh, should be able to show all the needs, but again, you would have to show them in multiple uh, plots. One single plot wouldn't be able to show the needs if you have them scattered around the, the objective space, but you, be, you should be able to show all of them. You just have to choose exactly the view you're interested in. Um, and so this is actually what we want to do uh, in the future. We want to do this with multiple needs and uh, also for objectives uh, higher than four, because the four is just a small step um, away from three, but th we are also interested in, let's say, uh, larger dimensions. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and just to acknowledge some projects we've been